Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. And it's a pleasure for me to welcome my good friend from Arsenal uh, fan spaces and well known in the Arsenal community. Big favourite of mine, Curtis Shaw. How are you doing, mate? Hey, good to be here, mate. And, and you know what? I appreciate you having me on because the last time I came on, it was like, oh, I wish we were where they are. Now we're in a better space, so I can speak with a bit more chess today. Not too much, but just a little bit more, you know. No, listen, the, the ta not the tables have turned because we we we're not we wasn't as bad as Arsenal was at the time. You remember you being yeah. a bit down, a little bit depressed with it all, didn't know which direction you wanted to go. But credit to Big Steve, I did come on there and did tell you that Mikel was the right man for the job. People needed to give him time. Yeah. Um, but no, it's good to see a lot of my friends are Arsenal fans. A lot of the supporters yeah. that follow me from the big six are Arsenal fans. So it is actually good mm. to see a few of you guys smiling for a change. <laughs> Listen, we've had a rough, like, probably 10 years, to be honest. And, you know, some fans are like, well, you never had it as bad as we had it. But because we grew up at the top of the league or second, if not first, to end up down there in, like, eighth place was just like, I lost a bit of a connection with the with the club. I didn't recognise the way they were acting. And I think it was the lack of ambition as well. You know, you can understand if you're struggling, but you're trying to get back to the top. It didn't even feel like we were trying. So it's nice that, that we're up there and, you know, it'd be nice to see where we end up at the end of the season, really. I think what, what's good as well is I don't think anyone on the Arsenal side sort of expected it. Mm. And the fact that... Um, couple of key signings, um, Zinchenko and Gabby came in there yeah. and the difference they've made to the mentality of the squad and that, it just shows you that it gives a bit of hope, I think, to a lot of clubs that think they're a million miles off it, but really yeah. they're not. It just takes a couple of good signings and a bit of a mentality change or certain bad apples to, yeah. to go out of the basket and, 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 and things can be a lot different, you know what I mean? But... Just touching on Zinchenko and, and, and Gabby, obviously I've watched a lot of them. I've seen the growth, Zinchenko yeah. especially. I mean, they must have blew your expectations wide open. Do you know what it is, Steve? Sometimes like I, I watch Man City play, you've got so many good players and, and you've got the headline makers, aren't you? Which is usually like De Bruyne or it was Sterling, Aguero, Sané and Haaland, whatever. Um so Zinchenko, I'll be honest, I, I didn't really know how good he was. I knew he was good, but I was like, ah, it's an all right signing. But he's way better than I expected. And and because of that kind of system that Arteta kind of has taken a little bit from Pep with the fullback kind of dropping into midfield, it just works perfectly for him. And I think because we don't have as many like superstars of Man City have got, I think Zinchenko's come out of his shell even more. He's like one of the leaders of our team now. Um, Gabriel Jesus, I always kind of thought he was a top, top player. Again, I thought a lot of the time I watched him for City, he was playing out wide, wasn't that prolific. I think he'd lost his spark a little bit at Man City, mm -hmm. not because of anything to do with City. You just had kind of people ahead of him in the pecking order. Um, obviously, we're, we're devastated. He got injured at the World Cup. I mean... I think he only played one game in the World Cup yeah. and got injured in, out for three to four months. Arteta is still saying now he doesn't know when he's going to be fit. So, yeah, devastated with that. But he made a massive difference, man, because even when he wasn't scoring, he made Saka better, he made Odegaard better, he made Martinelli better, very hungry player. And, yeah, I think credit to Man City in the sense, I think Pep has instilled that winning mentality into them. They've come into our dressing room, seen a lot of young players and said, listen, you know, aim a little bit higher. Zinchenko said that he told them we need to try and win the title this year. Yeah. And players were laughing at him. So, I mean, yeah, credit to Pep, man. He's done, it, it, he done it, it, a big it, favour. And it, and it mad doubt Pep's come out this season and he's questioning mentality when yeah. he's let a couple of players go with that mentality. But mm. Zinchenko, for example, Zinchenko was, was at Shakhtar and um, they wasn't playing. There was a war going on. The stadium had got a missile stuck in the side of it or something. And he was literally kicking a ball about in the streets of Ukraine. We were contacted by an agent. Man City paid a million for him, I think. They brought him in. We loaned him out to um, PSV Eindhoven. He was a number 10, number 8 midfielder. 
Um, I've got friends at PSV. They said he was garbage. He was rubbish. Yeah. He did. He wasn't good enough. He came back, started to play left back. Struggled at first. A lot of teams were targeting him. Um, Wolves offered eight million for him, and we accepted it. Uh, oh, wow. He turned around and said he didn't want to leave. He wanted to fight for his place. Fought for his place. Become an absolute number one player. Captain of Ukraine can play in midfield. Yeah. Play left. So for me, Alexander Zinchenko deserves everything he gets in life because yeah. he's he's a winner and he's a kid that can prove to all these footballers and all these young kids out there that if you believe in yourself, you don't have to go to Wolves because they accepted a bid. If you believe you're good enough Man City, stay there and fight. And it shocked me when he stayed because I thought he's not good enough at the time. I don't think he's going to yeah. get in, but he proved me wrong. And I wish him all the best. And and I don't think it's a case of Man City selling him to Arsenal because we thought they were bad players. Mm. I think it was, we're having a change of system and they're that good. They have to play week in, week out and be number one somewhere. So we couldn't hold them back. Yeah. So they've gone to Arsenal. A coach they know, Mikel, he sold them the project, come here. But the key thing for me is he's brought his own men in. So yeah. if there was any sign of dissent in that dressing room towards Mikel, there's no way on this planet that Gabbett and Zinchenko are letting anyone speak bad about him. They're going to yeah. say, hold on a minute. This was our coach at Man City. We won yeah. the formidables. We Centurions. We're four-time Prem winners. You know, uh, Arteta was a great coach. All City fans knew he was a great coach. Pep was devastated when he left. But yeah. his ambition, you know, going forward. But what he's done at Arsenal this season, you know, they've not won anything yet. Let's get it mm. clear. But they're yeah. in a fantastic position and he's changed it around. So... That moves us nicely on to mm. Friday night. It's not the yeah. league. Yet. We've not touched base with the league yet because of things that happened. But Friday night, FA Cup, Etihad Stadium. I don't know about you, but I ain't got a clue what team we're going to play. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you know what, Steve? I feel quite relaxed about this game for some reason because, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like there's a positive either way for it's us. It's not the end of the world if, if any of us lose it. That's and, what I'm saying. and especially for us, Steve, because our squad depth is not there at the moment. You know, you can bring in Alvarez, Gundogan, players like that. They're different level. Yeah. We don't have that squad depth at the moment. So for me, it's like if we go there and win, brilliant. You know, you've got into Pep's head a little bit. We haven't beaten Man City at the Etihad for a long time as well. Um, but on the flip side, if we don't win, I'm kind of a little bit like, well, you know, the fixture congestion with the Europa League and the league, yeah. it's not the end of the world. When we lost in the Carabao Cup, I genuinely wasn't that bothered because I was like, yeah. we don't really need that competition this year. So I am looking forward to it because I just, I'm intrigued to see how both managers approach it, whether we go full strength or whether we rotate. Um, I'm not too sure, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. You know, it's an exciting game to see. There's a weak gap, I think, between the, the this game and the next game, so um, yeah. people will get a good rest. The one thing for City side, the last few games, Pep's dropped Kyle Walker, Cancelo, Diaz, Bernardo, Foden. None of them have played because he said there's been an issue. I think that this FA Cup game has come at a perfect time for us because Cancelo, Walker, Diaz, Bernardo, Alvarez, I think they're all going to play because... Yeah. They need to prove to Pep that A, they want to be a part of this team, and B, they've got the the the, the minerals ready for the running. So I, as a Man City fan, I'm looking for a reaction from about five or six players that hasn't been there. So I'm hoping yeah. they and and to be honest, looking at them players, that's our first team players. They're just not playing yeah. at the minute. But we don't know if he'll play Haaland. Um, I think the goalkeeper will definitely change. Yeah. Um, but speaking to a few of your lads. You know, like you say, the squad depth. We we can replace man for man, and we've got a really good side underneath. Definitely. If you start stripping Arsenal back, Thomas Partey out, Lacanga in, you know, no, things no. like that. Uh, that's when Arsenal. You think, yeah, underneath, it's not the best. I mean, would would you with a week? Would you go for it, or would you risk showing Pep your hand in the league game, or do you give players in the squad minutes and think, you know what, if we get beat, we get beat, but let's get players up to speed. I think we're going to change one or two. Um, I saw a report today, Trossard's probably going to start on the left. I think Martinelli's had two pretty poor games. They're saying he's a bit tired since the World Cup, so I think he might come out. 
I'd potentially maybe put Tommy Asu in at right back instead of Ben White because you do need to rotate some of them. But like you said, we can't afford to take Partey out. We can't afford to take Saka out. You know, Zinchenko is going to be fired up for that game as well. So we've got to pretty much go 90% full strength because if we make wholesale changes, you'll, you'll hammer us because the quality is not there beneath it. So, yeah, I think with you, you can make changes. We can't really do that. And it's just... It, it's interesting for me. I wanted to ask you a couple of things about City as well, because it's Go like, it. do you think now that, you know, a lot of people talking about Haaland and the dynamics of Haaland. I'm Strikers Union. I'm a striker. So when people are saying, oh, Haaland's made City worse, I'm like, no, they've got to adjust to him. This guy's one of the best strikers we've probably seen in the prep. What What do you make of that and the dynamics with Haaland? Are, are you adjusting to having a big man up front? Are the defence not as good? Has the hunger gone a little bit because you've won so much? I think I think I think you've touched on a few things there that are correct. Um, yeah. First of all, the hunger to win four out of five titles and to go in the runnings we did with Liverpool. We were winning Carabao's yeah. and FA Cups and getting to Champions League finals and all that. We, we played a lot of football and there's yeah. a lot of players. I think it's a lot of the more foreign lads like Cancelo, Laporte, Bernardo. Starting to think, well, I've won the Prem, you know, I've won the FA Cup, I've won the Carabao Cup, the Champions League might not get there, but I fancy, you know, walking around Monaco or Barcelona in the day and having a nice mm. life. And I think, I think, I get that. I do get yeah. that. I think that's got, that's playing a part. Um, the Harlem thing is nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. I mean, it's a lot of people, in my opinion, that don't know football that are coming out with crap. Harlan's job is to score goals, right? He's doing that. His job yeah. is not to drop into midfield, not to come pressing high, not to go in the centre of the park winning headers and flicking it on. That's what he don't want him to do. If he if Harlan drops deep, the whole of the back four comes into the midfield space and Kevin De Bruyne, Rodri and Gundogan can't do their magic. Yeah. So Harlan's job is get away from this midfield, get in that box. Our problem is we ain't finding him. He's making yeah. amazing runs. He's making near post runs for the cross. Riyad Mahrez will bring the ball down, he'll trap a ball out the sky like nobody. And Harlan makes that early run. All Riyad has to do is, as soon as he's brought it down, fizz it across the ball, it's in. No, Riyad cuts inside. Harlan has to check his run. You know yourself being a striker, but same with Jack. Jack Grealish gets the ball, he's driving into the box. But when you're a striker, the last thing you want is your winger driving towards you with the ball. Yeah. Because he's getting in your space, you don't know what he's going to do. So, yeah. Wolves, uh, the other day, I don't think Haaland had a touch for about 18 minutes. And then wow. we made one cross in the box. He jumped about four foot above the Wolves defender, added it in the corner. So, yeah. I'm not saying spam crosses in, I'm not. But have you seen the way Liverpool get the ball in the box? Trent yeah. will put the ball in the box from his own half. Yeah, that yeah. Darwin Nunes is having 16, 17 chances a fucking game and missing them all. Haaland's <laughs> having three and scoring all three. Yeah, so yeah. it's just a case of we've played with a false nine for a long time with no striker. Everybody's been told, get the ball, don't put it in the box, you've got no striker. Yeah. Come back inside, play, 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 play. Now they're being told, get the ball, have a look. If the big man's there, put it in. But they're not. They're too programmed the other way. So yeah. it's going to take time. And Haaland at the minute, 31 goals. And we did an argument with a United fan. He's trying to tell me Martial was a brilliant player. He scored <laughs> 86 goals in six years. Haaland's got 31 in six months. So, you know, <laughs> there's these levels to this shit. But Haaland, listen, because it's not... Everyone thought, Man City sign Haaland, they're going to blow the league away. Yeah. But they didn't think of the consequences it has on everyone else. Yeah. And are we struggling at the minute to get the system right? 100%. Is there some players throwing the toys out the pram? 100%. But that's down to the best manager in the world to get it right. You can't yeah. have it all good. He's got to get it right. So for me, we're not at the races, but we, we ain't we ain't in crisis. You know what I mean? You're not in crisis. And for me, and I've said it on my channel a lot, um, I still think you're the favourites for the league. I do, because of yeah. the know-how, because of the depth, because of the manager. Five points is not a gap that is going to massively intimidate that dressing room. For us to win the league, I think we need to see 10, 12, 14 points. You, you, you've got to beat us as well because it, it, yeah. we, if we beat you twice, yeah. that's six points. We're back in it. My only doubt from a City point of view is 
I like to judge Manchester City when they get to sort of April. Mm. If we're on your coattails, if we can keep hold of the coattails till April, start getting it right, then we're ready for the challenge. The last 10 games of the season is where it's hanging. You're now going to get teams are going to come to Arsenal. They're going to put 11 men behind the ball. They're yeah. going to time waste. They're going to uh, goal kicks, all that. Your crowd's going to get frustrated because obviously you, 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 you want to go and blitz everyone. Yeah. And that's another test that you're going to get because it's so frustrating. It happens. It's going to be some bumps in the road and it's how you as a fan base and, and, and how Mikel can pick the team up and not think, oh shit, it's all gone to shit. It's not. You've just got to put it behind you and get back on the horse and go for it because if you dwell yeah. on it, um, you know, we've lost to Brentford this season. We've lost to mm. Man United. We should never have. We drew against Everton. We've drew against Villa. They've just been our own downfall. But we know that there's plenty more points to play for and we just keep on going. That's all you can do. Yeah. I think ultimately the aim for you is to win that Champions League, isn't it? You don't want to let the league go, but that Champions no. League, that's what Haaland's been brought in for, really. In an ideal world, Curtis, if someone said to me, would you let the league go this year but you win the Champions League? Of course I'd take that. I would. Yeah, yeah. But the Premier League's your bread and butter. And when you've won mm. four out of five, you get a taste for it because the best team don't always win the cup. It doesn't. But the best team yeah. always wins a league, man. Yeah. Always. And then yeah. league runs. I tell you that last last season's league running, it made me ill. I flew to <laughs> Madrid. I flew to Madrid for Atletico. We won that. And then I flew back into London for an FA Cup semi-final against Liverpool. We, 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 we got beat. And then we played, I think, Wolves on the midweek. Went to Wolves. Then we won that. Then we went to Southampton. And then we went to Madrid again for Real Madrid. Mm. And then we flew back and then we had West Ham away. And it was like, it was relentless, mate. And you couldn't even lose or enjoy. You don't enjoy it because you're in a title run. And Liverpool was so relentless chasing us. You can feel the pressure, man. Yeah. And I just want City to put that pressure on you a bit near the end. Yeah. That's what I want. I know. wonder I wonder from a City point of view of Liverpool, Liverpool dropping off. I wonder if that's kind of, you know, like Messi and Ronaldo, they say, even though they're rivals, they kind of push each other. I wonder if City and Liverpool, and you knowing they're not there this season, has kind of made you take your foot off the gas a little bit. Do you know what I said? Beginning of the season, I said, you can call me what you want, but this is my honest belief. Mm. Manchester City's comeback against Aston Villa yeah. broke certain Liverpool players' souls. There's one or two in that squad that thought, you know what? There's no matter what we do, we can't catch them in this league, yeah. right? Yeah. And Real Madrid broke some of our souls in the Champions League. I think some of our lads thought, no matter what we do in this Champions League, we're not going to do it. And that's mm. what I think's happened. One or two players have just inside have been broken by it. Because if yeah. you can go on a run and not lose a game for 14, 15 games and 90-odd points and lose the league by a point and keep doing that, that's going to affect you, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know, And that's what I think with Liverpool. With Arsenal, this is all new. But yeah. with Arsenal, from an outside looking in, I'll tell you the truth, it looks yeah. like how we looked in the early days under Pep. The, the fans are galvanised. The, the players are all together. You've got a unity on and off the pitch. It looks like it's yeah. a nice place to go to work now. Everyone's happy and... And that's like, it keeps the rhythm going. I always yeah. say about City, you've got to get that rhythm and keep it going. And listen, you know, Arsenal this season, with Chelsea dropping off, Liverpool dropping off, United in transition, City not being the best, there's no better time. There's no better time than to do it. The crazy thing for us, Steve, is, you know, at the start of the season, we just said Champions League, get top four. I know, like for me, I, I didn't think we'd be in a title race one bit. It's just going to be interesting now how they adjust and deal with that pressure. Because all of a sudden, if we finish second now, that would have been a great season at the start of the season. But we might then view that as failure because we could have won the whole thing. So this yeah. is why we're all so keen now. You know, we need a midfielder. Arteta said yesterday, you know, we need a midfielder before the window shuts. And, and we're all like, listen, he's got you top of the league. The owners have got to deliver a midfielder for him. So... It's going to be interesting. It is because now in my head, I want to win the league. You know, anything less than winning the league, I'm going to be disappointed with it. Even, even it signings, even signings yeah. at this time of the window, 
are really important and it's yeah. different when you're going for a title because yeah. a certain midfielder, if he's not the right one, he could fuck you up. Yeah. If he buys a midfielder and rests party and you lose games, you could be like, why has he signed him? So yeah. Mikel's got to get it right. It's January. The prices that are getting thrown around, Sacedo at Brighton, 100 million. And they're mad. This American yeah. geezer at fucking Chelsea has got some explaining to do because he's yeah. walking around throwing millions about and, and, and firing eight, eight year contracts at people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's okay, people saying we want signings. I mean, I think the Trossard signing is a great signing for you, but I think he's Premier League proven. He's mm. hungry. We've seen him do it against Liverpool and people like that. So you know what he's about. Yeah. It's not a lot of money at 27 million. Um, Mudrick, yeah, it's a bit more of a sensational signing, but the numbers just don't stack up. No, they don't stack up. And when you need other players in other departments, if you can get Trossard in for 27 and he's solid, and then go and spend another 50, 60 on a, on a DM, if they decide Mudrick, you might have said there's no more money for a DM, you're going to have to yeah. ride out in the Congo. Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. You yeah. know, it is what it is. Yeah, this this Chelsea guy, I mean, it's reckless spending. I mean, I know you guys have spent big money, but at least you're signing established players with big names and there's a purpose. Well, see, we, got... we, we, we earned it, though, as well. If it, Pedro Porro's going to Tottenham, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We sold him for seven and a half million and we got a 30% sell-on clause. Tottenham got to give us a check for 12 mil. Yeah. Ivor Illich went to Hellas Verona pre-season for about six or seven million. He's now going to Marseille. We got a thirty percent sell-on clause on him, so we're earning dough off these yeah. signings. Us, so and like you say, Haaland at sixty odd million, whatever it was. Alvarez at fourteen. We just signed an Argentinian midfielder, Peroni, mm. from Vela Sarsfield, eight mil. So you know, City are trying to structure it, and the business model works. But Todd Bowley, they're not Graham Potter players. Then he's not asking. No, them. No, no, no. no, the chairman's oh. the chairman signing the players, isn't he? And this is the difference between a club that's well run and a club that's like shit. He's trying to make a statement, but for me, Todd's doing it all wrong. Um, they already want Potter out, you know. Yeah. Bit like we we were talking yesterday. I mean, can you? How many times could Arteta have had the bullet? Man? Oh, three or four easily. And we said, I said on the show, if you sack him, you're starting from scratch. You've got to do this. You've got to get this in, do this in. These signings aren't his. Da, 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 da. And it's a merry-go-round. Yeah. But what I said is, with, um, with, with, with um, a lot of the Arsenal lads, I said, do you know what your problem was? And he went, what? I went, he was looking at Tottenham too much. And because Tottenham got Conte, it also triggered a reaction in the Arsenal fan base, like, hold on a minute. How can yeah. they get Conte and we've got Arteta, right? Yeah. But look at the two clubs now. Look at the two. You wouldn't take Conte now if they gave you him and 10 mil. You wouldn't have no, him. No chance. Not right? with that football. Exactly. But at the time, people are too busy looking over the road. You've got to concentrate on your own ship. And like you say, now the mentality's changed. And, and Mikel's in a great position because now if he wants to change the team or if he wants to tinker with it and he makes a mistake, nobody will question him because... They're looking at what he's doing and they know you're going in the right direction. If he tried to tinker with that team last season and you lost a couple of games, they're all wanting him out and rioting again. And that's how 12 months in football can change. I, th I think what Mikel did so well, and, and I didn't see this at the time because I was so angry with what we were doing. I think he turned around to the board and said, listen, you've got to knock this house down and rebuild it. The previous manager, Emery, had tried to patch it up, get a couple of signings, just get, you know, keep going. I think Arteta said, listen, this thing is rotten to the core. You've got players here that are just here for the wages. There's a disconnection with the fans. We've got to start again. And that's going to be a painful couple of years. As a fan, you don't want to endure that when you've been used to success. Finishing eighth, it's embarrassing. Everyone's bantering your team off. Best players are leaving, going to your rivals. Sanchez, Aubameyang, blah, blah, blah. But now he's kind of rebuilt us and we're just growing together now. You've got Martinelli, Saka, Jesus and Zinchenko were obviously massive signings from you lot. They've really helped us. And, and now the future does look bright for Arteta. And I'll be honest, I, I've changed my opinion on him, which, you know, ain't easy for me to admit, but it's, it's, it's definitely going in the right direction. Whether we win the title or whether we finish second, it's still you know, to be back in the Champions League, to get bigger and better players next year, it's definitely moving in the right direction. 
yeah, and that's that's all you can ask for. And I remember the interview outside the Emirates when we won two one. Very lucky yeah. last year, last minute, and they oh. asked me my opinion, and I said, look, Arteta's the man. He trust me. Look how you've performed today. That's against an elite team. You you should have beat us. You've got to yeah. give him time. And and off camera, I was getting dogs abuse. Mm. Dogs abuse off guys in balaclavas. Premzi was <laughs> nearly fighting with them all with, yeah. with me. Um, but I understood the frustration. And 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 people was like, Steve, you're just saying that because he used to work for City. And I'm like, I'm not. If I genuinely thought you'd been bantered into getting a coach and he wasn't good enough, I'd have gone on there and said it. But I knew what the Man City players were saying in house. I knew what people thought of him and and, and, and his mentality. And I, and, I, and I just had an inkling that if they didn't bow down to the fan pressure, then he'd, he'd get it right. And I said on a few shows, just if you can see yourself going in the right direction, it might only be small steps, but if you can see yourself going right, stick with it. And I think now Arsenal is the blueprint for a lot of clubs. Yeah. A lot of clubs are now looking at Arsenal and thinking, hold on a minute, we get a rookie manager in, but he needs time. We've got, to, we've got to have time. And I think Arsenal's cleared the path for a lot of clubs now to say, hold on, look at the Arsenal model. Yeah. Just relax a little bit. Let us do our thing. Graham Potter ain't going to get time at Chelsea. No, no, he but won't. he's one manager that's jumped from Brighton to Chelsea, but they're expecting him to, to, to turn um, water into wine overnight and he can't do it. Yeah. And Graham Potter will lose his job and Graham Potter will go somewhere else and be an absolute success. I've got no doubt about it. But, mm. you know, listen, it's, it, it is good because um, I've got a lot of friends at Arsenal. It's good to see everyone smiling. Don Robbie's happy. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not getting You yeah. know, the channel's doing well. Turkish, I've never heard Turkish speak as much in my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's talking, he's smiling. Troops, he's still swearing and rolling around the couch and arguing with his <laughs> mate. But he still never be happy. Troops, I don't think. But yeah, no, mate. Listen, coming up to the game, we'll get yeah. a match prediction. Um, I'm gonna go with a very tight game, and I think Manchester City will just nick it two one. Mm. Do you know what? I'm gonna stick with my prediction that I said on on AFTV. I said one one, um, which. I don't think either one of us would want because I think that's a replay, isn't it? Um, and I don't it's want, replay, yeah. I don't want more fixtures. I think it's a hard game for us um, because I do think we'll rotate a few players. And like you're saying, the likes of Walker, Cancelo and all them coming back in, that's not really what I want to hear. No disrespect no. to the players. I'd rather Rico Lewis was at right back than, than Kyle Walker. Yeah. Um, and I think those guys will have a real point to prove because they're being questioned and... You know what I mean? Pep's asking questions of their mentality. So I think I think City will be very fired up for the game. But I've got to back my team at least to come out of there with a draw, um, which, like I said, I don't think a replay would be great for us. Definitely not with um, the amount of games we've got. But I see a picture the other day, Pep, and they were saying they had like Pep as the godfather and they were saying Vincent Company top of the championship, Xavi top of La Liga and Arteta top of the prem anything all peps like offspring are all flourishing everywhere else well i hope he finally gets the credit because you know all this fraud and can't win the champions league with, without messi and all this nonsense man <laughs> the guy's a genius we know he is anyone with a footballing brain knows it you look at them like you just said vincent company playing the man city way arsenal definitely playing the man city way you know and you look at uh javi he's playing the pep way so it works. The only team that ain't playing the Pep way at the minute is us because we've decided yeah. to team. So, you know, <laughs> that's Pep, man. He's, he's, he's a madman. He's a genius. He's, he's, but he's, the, he's, he's the best. Amazing. He's the best, so, isn't he? He's the best. In yeah, the world. he's good. And listen, mate, I'm looking forward to the game. It's always yeah. nice to chat with you. I appreciate you coming on. No problem. Um, the big one's the league game. Yeah. The Valentine's Day massacre coming yeah. up at the, uh, at the Emirates. I'm actually it's coming after, down it? to... Yeah, I'm coming down to uh, London for two days. Yeah. So I don't know if I well I'm gonna swing by AFTV on the Wednesday, see yeah. if Robbie wants me to do out with Turkish box to box or out like that. So if yeah. you're about, mate, I'll catch up with you there. Yeah, yeah, that's the big one. It take is mate, missus, yeah. take the missus out the night before because the day after it's gonna be carnage, isn't it? For the league. Wait, my missus never gets Valentine's Day. I'm either abroad. I think last year I was in Lisbon watching City. Yeah. Um so she gets a card and some flowers delivered while I'm on a plane <laughs> usually somewhere. So, yeah. <laughs> but, mate, listen, it's great to talk to you. Thanks yeah. for coming on. 
No Enjoy problem, the bro. game and me and you will touch base uh, near the time for the league game. 100%. Take care, Cheers, bro. Pal. All the Thanks, best. Curtis. Thank you, mate.